I am Deepika Prakash from National Law University, Delhi. The topic of this presentation is data analysis under the subject of research methodology. In every research, there are certain common steps that the researcher follows. They are Firstly, the researcher defines a problem, then he goes on to review the available literature on that problem, then he formulates hypothesis or research questions as the case may be, then he creates a research design. On the basis of this research design, he goes on to further collect data with the help of various tools of data collection. Once the data is collected, this data is processed, analyzed and interpreted. And then the final step in the research is writing of the research report. Data analysis is an important step in the entire process of research. Data alone in both whether qualitative or qualitative research is insufficient until it is carefully processed and scientifically analyzed and interpreted. The present presentation deals with only how quantitative research data must be analyzed. Now coming to the meaning of data analysis. Wilkinson and Bhandarkar defines data analysis as a number of closely related operations that are performed with the purpose of summarizing the collected data and organizing these in such a manner that they will yield answers to the research questions or suggest hypotheses or questions if no such questions or hypothesis has been there at the initiation of the study. Another meaning is given by C. R. Kothari who explains analysis as computation of certain measures along with searching for patterns of relationship that exist among data groups. He further goes on to quote G. B. Giles saying that in the process of analysis, relationships or differences supporting or conflicting with original or new hypotheses should be subject to statistical tests of significance to determine with what validity data can be set to indicate any conclusion. Now general understanding is that data analysis, data processing and data interpretation are one and the same. However, this is not true. All these three steps are very distinctive steps in the entire research process. Quoting Professor John Goyne, processing of data refers to concentrating, recasting and dealing with the data so that they are as responsive to analysis while analysis of data refers to seeing the data in the light of hypothesis of research questions and the prevailing theories and drawing conclusions that are as amiable to theory formation as possible. Now let us go ahead to understand the difference between them. First that we are going to understand is the data processing. There are various steps under data processing. The first step being editing. Under editing raw data that is collected is checked for errors, omissions, legibility etc. for further processing. The second step under data processing is coding. Under it, assign numerals or other symbols to the answers is done so that responses can be put into a limited number of categories or classes. Now this coding can be pre or post. By pre coding, codes being assigned while the questions 
or interview schedule is being prepared. That is, before they, they are prepared, the codes are assigned. Whereas, under post coding, codes are assigned to the answers after they have been collected. Third step in data processing is classification. Most research studies result in a large volume of raw data, which must be reduced into homogeneous groups, if we are to make a meaningful relationship between them. This fact necessitates classification of data, which happens to be the process of arranging data in groups or classes on the basis of common characteristics. Data having a common characteristic are placed in one, one class and in this way the entire data gets divided into number of groups or classes. Now, this classification further may be according to attributes or according to class intervals. Now, under attributes, they may be based on descriptive characteristics like sex or literacy or they may be based on numerical characteristics like weight or income. Under class interval, classification is based on numerical uh, distinction like um, the difference in height between 5 and 6 feet, the difference of height between 6 to 7 feet, etcetera. Fourth step under data processing is tabulation. The process of summarizing raw data and displaying the same in compact form mainly in the form of statistical tables for further analysis is known as tabulation. It makes research manageable, readable and understandable. Now, tabulation is essential because of the following reasons. First, it conserves space and reduces explanatory and descriptive statements to a minimum. Second, it facilitates the process of comparison. Third, it facilitates the summation of items and the detection of errors as well as omissions. Fourth, it provides the basis for various statistical computation. Now, there are two types of tables. First is a simple or also known as frequency distribution and second table is a complex or cross table. Now, coming to a simple table, under it the different attributes are stated in the left hand column and the frequency or the extent of occurrence of each of these class are written in the other column. In this three things are essential. First, the class made must be mutually exclusive. Second, the tabulation must have internal logic and order and three, the class interval must be carefully and reasonably selected. The following is an example of a univariant simple table, meaning that it has one variable. In this table, the variant is age. Coming to the next type of table, the complex table. Following is an example of a complex table by or multivariant table. They have more than one variable as in this example, income and sex of the population studied are the variables. These tables have become more popular in the recent researches. Now, coming to how a table is to be prepared, following are certain guidelines on it. First guideline is the title of the table. Give a suitable headline to each table which should be short and appropriate. Second, subheadings and captions. Give subheadings to different columns and rows. Captions are given to the various classifications made like income, age, etc. Third guideline for preparing a table is the size of the column. Each column must have the correct size, which make them look more attractive. Next, Arrangement of items in rows and columns. Items must be arranged in one order 
for example, alphabetically, chronologically. Next, total. Columns must have different totals, each column having their own totals. Next, demarcation of columns. If columns have been divided further into subgroups, they should be in a suitable order and with subheadings. Then footnotes. If there is anything special about the table or figures which need to be brought to attention, the same should be mentioned in a footnote to the table. Data interpretation. After data has been processed and analyzed, interpretation of data is done. Now, there is a fine line of difference between data processing and data interpretation. Interpretation leads to what the given research findings really mean and what is the underlying generalization which is manifested through the data which is collected. Further interpretation may be descriptive, analytical or theoretical as the researcher deems fit. Hence, under data interpretation, the conclusions that the researcher has reached after the data has been processed and analyzed are further interpreted. Now, there, there are certain techniques of interpretation. The following are the same. First, researcher must be given reasonable explanation of the relation which he has founded and the interpretation must be in the line of this relationship and the underlining process. They also must be uniform and coherent in interpretation. Second technique of interpretation is that extraneous information if collected must also be considered for the final interpretation. They may have a key factor in them. Third, consult an expert in the field before embarking the final interpretation. The expert might give an insight into the research result which will further help the researcher. And finally, all relevant factors must be considered before finishing the final interpretation. The researcher must not be in a haste. He might come to an inaccurate result because of such a haste. Now, what are the types of data analysis? Data analysis can be divided into two types. There is a descriptive data analysis and inferential analysis. Descriptive analysis has been defined by C. Moray as largely the study of distribution of one variable. This study provides us with profiles of companies, work groups, persons and other subjects on any multiple characteristics such as size, composition, efficiency, preference, etc. Now, an illustration of a descriptive analysis is that, let us say the researcher is collecting data from various law colleges in India to map the job preferences of students in the final year of LLB. In such a research, job preferences like litigation, corporate, further studies, judiciary, etc. become the variables. Tools which are used under descriptive analysis are percentage and mean method. The data under descriptive analysis are then further represented in a graph. Now, coming to inferential analysis. For testing hypothesis, in order to determine with what validity data can be set to indicate some conclusion or conclusions, inferential analysis is used. Now, an illustration of this can be that the researcher is studying the access to justice system in India and his hypothesis being that the Indian justice delivery system favors the haves and marginalizes the have nots. The data collected is from various stages in the delivery system like police, station, courts of justice, litigants, etc. Once the data is collected, processed, then the researcher does the inferential analysis to test the validity of the hypothesis. What are the general characteristics of analysis of data? 
First, the researcher should keep in mind that analysis will vary depending upon the nature of the study. That is, whether the study undertaken is a qualitative study, a quantitative study or a mixed combination of the both. Second characteristic that the researcher must keep in mind regarding analysis of data is that researcher should possess thorough knowledge of the area of research and data collected. Third characteristic is that the data to be analyzed and interpreted should be producible, be readily disposed to quantitative treatment and have significance for some systematic theory and can serve as broad generalization. Fourth general characteristic that should be kept in mind regarding analysis of data is that researcher must keep a clear set of hypotheses formulated at the very start of the research which will lead to clearer actions and better data collection as well as analysis. Fifth characteristic is that in case the data collected is from vague clues rather than according to the specific hypothesis. In such cases, the data are analyzed inductively or investigated during the process and not by means of any prescribed set of rules. Sixth, for a successful study, the researcher must keep in mind the task of analysis and interpretation should be designed before the data is actually collected. Data analysis also includes statistical analysis. Statistics is an important tool for a researcher. The science of collection, presenting and analysis and interpretation of numerical data is termed to be statistics. Statistics is useful in all fields of research and study including law. In a research with a large data, statistics helps in reducing such data into a more manageable size for the purpose of analysis and further interpretation. Now coming to an illustration where statistics can be of use to a law researcher. The researcher let's say is doing an impact analysis of the National Security, National Food Security Act of 2013 in the National Capital Territory. The universe of the researcher in such a case is Delhi and the population is all the segments of people who are eligible for the food under the said act. The tools of data collection chosen by the researcher let's say is the survey method. Once the data is collected, the size of the data would be big. Here the statistical tool would be of great assistance to the researcher to achieve his research objective. Now statistics also has certain limitations which should be kept in mind by any researcher who is employing statistical analysis in his research. Some of these limitations are first qualitative values like subjective perceptions, qualities and attributes are not considered under statistics. It only considers quantities. This by far is the greatest limitation of statistics. Second limitation is that statistics studies and analyzes group attributes rather than individual characteristics and values. Another limitation of statistics is that statistical analysis is mostly based on average. Hence, the inferences drawn through them are only approximate and not exact like that of mathematics. Fourth limitation of statistics is that it only helps discover, analyze certain characteristics. It does not explain the entire picture. Hence, it only forms a part of the inference and statistical interpretation is part of the larger interpretation of the available data. Now there are certain tools which are generally employed for statistical analysis. I would name a few. First is measure of central tendency, measuring 
dispersion, measure of asymmetry and finally the fourth one measure of relationship. These four are different types of tools that any person specifically a researcher employs for the analysis of the data which is statistical. These days statistical software packages are also available. Softwares packages are basically computerized statistical data analysis. Some of the uh, packages are the popular ones like SAS which stands for statistical analysis system and SPSS which is statistical package for social sciences. Now there, what happens to a data analysis when there is hypothesis in the research? When specific hypothesis has been set down, then the major part of analysis involves getting the appropriate combination of data and reading them so as to verify or falsify the hypothesis. A hypothesis which is tested for possible reduction is known as null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is very useful in testing the significant difference between what was assumed and observed value. Now there are certain precautions which every researcher should keep in mind while analyzing and interpreting a data. First precaution is that comprehensive knowledge and proper perspective must be there. The researcher while analyzing the data must have thorough knowledge of the research from a wider perspective rather than analyzing the immediate element of the problem. Second precaution that can be taken by the researcher for analysis and interpretation of the data is that he should take into account all pertinent elements. All relevant factors must be considered while analyzing. Failure to do so will make the generalizations drawn inaccurate. Another precaution that the researcher must keep in mind is the limitation of the study. The researcher must always mention all the limitations in the study like let us say non-representation in sampling, bias in the data, inadequacy in the design, inaccurate statistical analysis to name a few. Another precaution that the researcher must always bear in mind before analyzing an interpretation is proper evaluation of data. Suitable interpretation of data lies on proper evaluation of facts. The researcher must interpret and analyze the data thoroughly himself for better use. Now part of data analysis is also data representation. There are various forms of data representation and the primary one and the most attractive one is the diagrammatic representation which is use of diagrams in representing the data which has been analyzed. There are various types of data representations like graph, bar diagram, pie chart, histograms, pictograph. We will look at these in the subsequent slides. In a graph there are two axes, the x and the y. X axis is horizontal and the y axis is vertical intersecting the x axis. The point where intersection occurs is the place of origin. The independent variable are scaled on the x axis and the dependent ones on the y axis. In the above example of the graph, the growth of female literacy in India since independence has been shown. The x axis has the years while the y axis has the rate of growth of women literacy in India. Next example of a diagrammatic representation is a bar diagram. The bar diagrams are drawn either vertically or horizontally, each bar indicating the value of the variable. In the illustration, the bar diagram indicates by way of example what was the voters turnout till the year 2010 general election in the state of Delhi. The data is merely for illustrative purposes.
Another type of data representation through diagram is a pie chart. In a pie chart, the data is presented in the form of a circle with each category occupying a segment that is proportional according to the size of its data. In the illustration, the percentage distribution of the various types of crimes in India in the year 2000 has been highlighted. Another diagrammatic representation example is a pictograph. Under a pictograph, each picture represents a certain number and the total number of pictures give the total number of events or elements. Following is an example of it where population of Middlebury from the year 1941 to 2001 has been represented. In it, each figure represents 1000 persons. So, one can calculate the total amount by counting them. Another example of data representation through diagram is a histogram. In histogram, the values of variables are represented in vertical bars drawn adjacent to each other. The difference between a graph and a histogram is that while in a graph, points are plotted and then joined with each other, in a histogram, only bars are drawn. A histogram can be transformed into a line graph by joining the middle points of the tops of the blocks with straight lines. Following is an example of a histogram representing the final scores of the students. Hence, in this presentation, we saw that data analysis is an important step of the entire research process. Through data analysis, a researcher learns systematic and scientific researching skill and how the researching that has been done by him can be put to accurate findings. Through data analysis, the command over various tools and techniques is learned and then a more fulfilling and fruitful result of the entire research outcome is possible. Thank you.